right, so I'm going to attempt to do a visual aid with this, okay? So what we say, sixth grade was kind of like that formational experience when you're trying to get to know who you are. I'm, who's ever encountered building a house, right? Building a house. And I'm not necessarily saying you go out and you do concrete, all right? But you know kind of the general structure. What happens when a person wants to build a house? What's the first thing they have to build? Foundation, okay. We're getting to that. But the first first thing that they have to do, they have to clear the land. The first first thing a person has to do when it comes time to build a house is find a plot of land to build a house on. Okay, so we're going to call middle school the time in your life, the time in your life when you're trying to clear the land. Okay, so this is this is our land, right? In sixth grade, middle school, just go with it. Okay, I had limited resources this morning. Um, right, you're going to clear the land, so you start you start clearing the land all throughout middle school. There you go. You can have one in the back. <laughs> anyway, um, sixth grade is that opportunity where you can clear the land. Take that as a souvenir. Uh, <laughs> I touched you. Everybody can see me here in the back. Um, okay, you're clearing the land. You're clearing the land. You're getting to know yourself. You're coming to know your likes and your dislikes. And after you clear the land, if you've been formed with parents that have educated you, if you've done well in school, right, if you've, if you've watched appropriate television shows and made good decisions and good choices, right, you come to understand very early on that the foundation, the grounding of your life, needs to be, don't laugh at my handwriting, God, okay? God. He's the foundation of your life. And when you discover that God is the foundation of your life, you launch yourself in a high school, your focus needs to be on getting to know yourself and getting to know Him. Okay, and you get to high school, and what happens the sex next step of, of building a house? What's the next step of building a house? Plans, okay? You start drawing up plans. You want to know what your house is going to look like. You found a plot of land. You found the place where you want to build your house. Then you got to start coming up with a plan. So you start coming up with kind of what do you want to do in your future, right? When I was a freshman in high school, I wanted to be a librarian. Don't laugh. Okay. Oh, I really did. I thought libraries were the coolest place on earth. <laughs> I was, my parents, okay, just a little side note, um, my mother is running around like a chicken with her head cut off today. If you, if you see her, I'm serious, she'll verify this. Um, when I had to get punished, which was pretty frequently, because um, I, I was a smart aleck, um, they had to punish me by taking away my library card. I kid you not. <laughs> I, was, I was not allowed to read. When I was punished. Like, I could watch as much TV as I wanted, which as far as I was concerned, was torture. Right? But I had to be punished by taking away books. Okay? So I wanted to be a librarian, right? But you start making you start making those initial plans, right? You start coming up with the, the, the things that you want to do later in life. You draw up your plans like an architect draws up plans for the house. Now, the person that wants to build their house, stay with me. The person that wants to, to build their house has to call upon somebody that's far more educated than they are to build it, right? Not everybody's an architect, not everybody can just sit down and sketch out plans for a house. So they call upon people with knowledge and wisdom in those areas. And then they call upon people to kind of help them build up an idea of what the house is going to look like beyond the plans, the actual materials, the things that are going to go into the house, right? So when you're in high school, you're supposed to call upon those people that know more than you, right? Your youth minister, your parents, older siblings, your teachers, friends, right? You're supposed to call upon people that are wiser than you are in certain areas. Okay, and so, so as high school continues, especially in your junior and senior year of high school, you start, these are going to be our materials again, don't laugh, uh, you start gathering the things that you need to build a house, okay? I said Legos in the description, so here's your Lego, right? Um, you start gathering the materials. So you have your plans, you have, first of all, you have your land, right? You have what you're going to build your house upon. And then you have your plans, you know what your house is going to look like, and you gather your materials. And the final step before you can actually start building is to... For the foundation. Somebody said foundation over here, right? The foundation, and this comes straight from scripture, the foundation of where you live needs to be built on stone, on rock, not sand. Right? What happens if you build a house in a swamp? It just kind of implodes on itself, right? What happens if you build a house on a solid foundation that, that had the full 30 days it needed to set and harden? Where when you start putting that, that initial structure of the house, I don't work construction, so I don't know what it's called, the framing of the house, right? It's not going to just topple over. It's just going to fall apart. So senior year is really when you start pouring that foundation. Now what happens, let's just, let's just use an example, okay? What happens if you start pouring the foundation of a house and this, this second designer comes in, let's say, somebody else that wants to help you a whole, whole lot. They're really awesome and they're really great and they're really cute, funny, and, and he plays sports and, and she's, she's a musician, right? All that good stuff, right? What happens when that person comes in and they just decide the foundation that you have just poured 
The foundation that you know is going to remain firm and solid, they just walk right across it. Right? They put their footprints right in it. What happens? They mess up the whole thing. They mess up the whole thing. Right? They're not a bad person. They didn't want to mess up the whole thing. But that's what happened. Right? Because footprints in a foundation, the foundation's going to have shifting in it. So like 20 years down the line, you build your house, everything seems absolutely perfect. You wake up one morning, you walk into your kitchen, and there's a crack coming right down the main part of the wall. Right? And then you think to yourself, oh my gosh, that's right, that person walked across my foundation 20 some odd years ago. Right? You can't get rid of it. It's there forever. All right? That's dating. When you are a high school student and you are forming that foundation, you are finding God, you are getting to know yourself. And why do you have to get to know yourself? Because love is a gift of self. You can't expect to gift yourself unless you know yourself. That's just basic logic. Right? If you are forming who you are, and if you're allowing God to work the way God needs to work within you, the way God ultimately wants to work within you, then you are supposed to, you are supposed to pay more attention to yourself than another person. This is not me knocking you for being in high school by any means. High school was awesome. Right? I thoroughly enjoyed my time. I went to this high school. I was the student body president my senior year. I had a lot of friends. I was, I mean, it was a time of my life, right? And I can't imagine, I honestly cannot imagine what a high school experience would be, would be for people that choose to focus on God and God alone, right? That want to pay attention to Him and so that God can pay attention to them, right? It's a two-way street. I don't just pay attention to God because it makes me happy, right? I don't just pay attention to God because it makes me feel good, right? I pay attention to God because ultimately, Ultimately, I know that's what's going to make me holy. Because ultimately, I know that's what's going to get me to heaven. Because I know that if I love God the way I'm supposed to, then God can love me the way he wants to. That's a huge idea. Right? God is love. I cannot hope to experience love ever in my life. Whether I, I become a nun, whether I become a mother. right? I can never hope to experience love unless I know God first. So you can never hope to love your future spouse or the, or the religious life or the priesthood the proper way unless you allow God to love you first. And you are not allowing God to love you first if you muddy that up with another person. That doesn't make the other person bad. That doesn't mean that, that you, don't, you choose not to date people because you think they're ugly or you, because you think they smell or because you think they're annoying, right? You choose not to date them because you know they're worth more. They're worth more than a relationship right now when you're not ready. Okay? Does that make sense? God first. God first. Love is not just a gift of self. Right? Love is not just an act of the will. Love is, and I'm going to throw out a term that it's okay if you don't remember it. You just have to remember the idea behind it. Okay? Love is ultimately a value response. Okay? A value response. So, so let's use an example. Okay? Let's say there's this guy named Bob. Is there anybody named Bob in here? That's usually a pretty generic name that nobody ever has. So it's funny. Bob's like the most popular name, and I have never done a workshop where there has been a person named Bob. So I can always use Bob as my example. Okay? So there's this guy named Bob, all right? And I meet Bob, and Bob is cute. Bob is funny. Bob is smart. Bob's really Catholic, right? Bob's got a good family. Bob knows where he's going in life, right? And so I see Bob. And I recognize things within him that are valuable, right? Things within him that are good, virtue, honesty, humor, right? Humility, somebody <coughs> that's worth my time. If I'm going to love Bob properly, okay? If I'm gonna love Bob properly, as his girlfriend, as his fiance, as his wife, wherever it goes, right? If I'm gonna love Bob properly, if I'm gonna <coughs> give myself to him, and if I'm gonna will the good for him, then I'm going to see the value within him, okay? I'm going to see the good qualities within him and say, those are the reasons why I'm gifting myself. Those are the reasons why I'm choosing to do good for him. Does that make sense? Value response. You see something good within the other person, and you respond to it. What's the response? The gift of self. What's the response? The choosing to will the good for that other person, okay? Now, Bob's got this value. All right? And I recognize that value. And I know Bob's funny, and I know Bob's smart, and I know Bob's really Catholic because he expresses those things to me, right? Because he proves his intelligence by having a, a good conversation with me, 
right? He proves his love of this Catholic Church by going to daily mass every day, right? He proves that he's humorous because he, he can cut up with people in an appropriate environment, right? Bob's got value that Bob knows that he's got, right? Bob knows he's funny. Bob knows he's smart. Bob knows he's a good Catholic. Bob knows himself. The only way I experience Bob's value is because he expresses it. The only way Bob expresses his value is because he knows he has it and it's worth sharing. So are you following my train of thought? Right? I can only be loved, right? We're just gonna we're gonna take Bob's example, now we're gonna put it into me, right? If I am the person that's being loved by the guy, right? The only way that guy's gonna love me is if he sees value within me. The only way that guy's ever gonna see value within me is if I know the value is there to begin with. And I'm willing to share it. The time to get to know your value, the time to get to know your worth is now. When you're in high school, right? So you're not choo you're choosing not to date right now, not just for the other person, but for yourself. Because in 5, 10, 15 years, when you meet that special person that you want to spend the rest of your life with, right? They can treat you the way you deserve to be treated. They can love you well, they can gift themselves to you, they can will the good for you because they see value that you know you have. You with me? They see value in you and you know you have value and you know you're worth everything for them. You know you're worth respect. You know you're worth being, you know, not lied to, right? You know that you're worth the time and the energy and the effort needed to make a relationship worthwhile. Right? Okay. We're going to use a visual example. I've never done this before, so let's, let's pray that it works. I'm sorry. <coughs> okay. All right. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah, please. By all means. She's going to the bathroom. <laughs> okay. You're going along in life. You're bopping along. You're living your life. And let's say this is Bob and this is Katie. Okay? <laughs> Bob and Katie. Bob's looking kind of pale. I got good complexion. <laughs> so we got Bob and we got Katie. And, and Katie's living her life and Bob's living his life. And they're walking along. La -da -da -da. Let's say Bob and Katie are juniors in high school. Okay? They're walking along and bam, they bump into one another. Okay? This is really bad visual example. <laughs> prove in the future, right? Okay. Bob and Katie meet one another. Let's say they meet one another in the cafeteria one afternoon. And afternoon at lunchtime, I guess I can hear in the cafeteria. Um, they meet one another at lunchtime. Bob says something funny. Katie laughs. That evening, Bob texts Katie. Okay, because that's what happens these days. People text one another. Okay. Back in my day, you just talked to them in person. Now it's texting. Okay, but so Bob texts Katie. And he's like, hey, what's up? I think that's an appropriate way to begin. Okay, and the next thing you know, the next thing you know, Bob and Katie are in, I've heard that this is what it's called, talking. <laughs> wow. I love how that identifies like a couple, even before they're a couple, like they're talking, he's awfully <laughs> handsome. They're having a conversation, great, I can jump in too, right? You can have three people in a conversation. So anyway, I, 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 I say it now, it drives me insane when people say, oh, I'm talking to someone, it's like awesome, I talked to my mom this morning. <laughs> I would never go this fast, but I'm in high school, so I'm not wise yet, right? Okay, so, so Bob texts Katie, hey, what's up? They have a conversation until like 10 o'clock that night, whatever. Next day, they see one another at school. They make eyes across the commons, okay? A week later at the football game, Bob sits next to Katie. And the week after that, Bob takes Katie out for their first date, okay? They go out for their first date. Across. She interrupts the talking. Whoops! <laughs> There was a brief hiatus where he talked to her, but now he's back to me. <laughs> so Bob takes Katie out on the first date. Okay, Bob and Katie, how are we doing time? Is it time? Okay, okay. Bob and Katie go out on their first date. And, and the next thing you know, they're dating. They're boyfriend and girlfriend. 